Isaac was the son of Abraham, and he was 40 years old when he married Rebekah. Almost 20 years later, Rebekah still had no children. So Isaac asked the Lord to let her have a child, and the Lord answered his prayer. Before Rebekah gave birth, she knew she was going to have twins, because she could feel them inside her, fighting each other. She thought, why is this happening to me? Finally, she asked the Lord why her twins were fighting, and he told her, your two sons will become two separate nations. The younger of the two will be stronger, and the older son will be his servant. When Rebekah gave birth, the first baby was covered with red hair, so he was named Esau. The second baby grabbed onto his brother's heel, so they named him Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when they were born. The boys grew up. Esau became a skilled hunter, who loved to be out in the fields. But Jacob was a quiet man who stayed at home. Esau was Isaac's favorite because he was fond of good meat. But Jacob was Rebekah's favorite. One day Esau came back from hunting. He was tired and weak from hunger. Jacob was boiling a pot of beans. So Esau said to Jacob, I am weak with hunger. Let me have some of that red soup. Jacob replied, Sell me your rights as the firstborn son. I'm about to die, Esau answered. What good will those rights do me? But Jacob said, Promise me your birthrights here and now. And that's what Esau did. Jacob then gave Esau some bread and some of the bean stew. When Esau had finished eating and drinking, he just got up and left, showing how little he thought of his rights as the firstborn which usually came with inheriting the largest amount of property, as well as the leadership of the family. When Esau was 40 years old, he married two Hittite women. These marriages made Isaac and Rebekah very unhappy. When Isaac grew old, his eyes were so bad he could see only shadows. He called in his firstborn son Esau and said, I am old and might die at any time, so take your bow and arrows and go hunting. Kill an animal for me to eat. Prepare the food that I love. Bring it to me and I will eat it. Then I will bless you before I die. Rebekah had been listening, and as soon as Esau left to go hunting, she said to Jacob, I heard your father tell Esau to kill a wild animal and cook some tasty food for him before he dies. Your father said this because he wants to bless your brother with the Lord as his witness. Now, my son, listen carefully to what I want you to do. Go and kill two of your best young goats and bring them to me. I'll cook the tasty food that your father loves so much. Then you can take it to him so he can eat it and give you his blessing before he dies. My brother Esau is a hairy man, Jacob reminded her, and I am not. If my father touches me and realizes I am trying to trick him, he will put a curse on me instead of giving me a blessing. Rebecca insisted, let his curse fall on me. Just do what I say and bring me the meat. So Jacob brought the meat to his mother, and she cooked the tasty food that his father liked. Then she took Esau's best clothes and put them on Jacob. She also covered the smooth part of his hands and neck with goatskins and gave him some bread and the tasty food she had cooked. Jacob disguises himself as his brother Esau to receive his father Isaac's blessing. Despite Isaac's initial suspicion due to Jacob's voice, the deception is successful and Isaac unknowingly blesses Jacob with prosperity and dominion. As Jacob departs after receiving the blessing, Esau returns with the food for his father and they both realize the deception. Esau pleads with his father Isaac to bless him, but Isaac explains that he was deceived and has unknowingly blessed Jacob. Esau weeps bitterly and asks if there is any blessing left for him. Isaac blesses Esau with a promise of prosperity but foretells that he will serve his brother Jacob and eventually break free from that servitude. Esau harbors intense resentment against Jacob for stealing the blessing. Esau planned to kill Jacob after Isaac's death prompting Rebekah to advise Jacob to flee to her brother Laban's house until Esau stopped being angry. Isaac called in Jacob, then gave him a blessing and said, Don't marry any of those Canaanite women. Go at once to your mother's father Bethuel in northern Syria and choose a wife from one of the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. I pray that God All-Powerful will bless you with many descendants and let you become a great nation. May he bless you with the land he promised Abraham, so that you will take over this land where we now live as foreigners. Isaac then sent Jacob to stay with Rebekah's brother Laban. On his journey, Jacob stops for the night, using a stone for a pillow. He dreams of a ladder connecting heaven and earth, 
with angels ascending and descending. God speaks to Jacob, reaffirming the covenant with his forefathers and promising him land, descendants and blessings. Jacob wakes, surprised by the encounter, and consecrates the place, naming it Bethel. He vows to make God his own and, moved by the experience, continues his journey with newfound purpose and commitment. As Jacob arrives in Haran, he encounters shepherds at a well. He meets Rachel, Laban's daughter, and learns she's his relative. Jacob helps water Rachel's flock and is welcomed by Laban. When Laban heard the news about his sister's son Jacob, he ran to meet him. Laban hugged him and kissed him and brought him to his house. Jacob told Laban everything that had happened. Then Laban said, This is wonderful. You are from my own family. So Jacob stayed with Laban for a month. One day Laban said to Jacob, You are a relative of mine. It is not right for you to continue working for me without pay. What should I pay you? Now Laban had two daughters. The older was Leah and the younger was Rachel. Leah was average at best, but Rachel was beautiful. Jacob loved Rachel, so he said to Laban, I will work seven years for you if you will allow me to marry your daughter Rachel. Laban said, It would be better for her to marry you than someone else, so stay with me. So Jacob stayed and worked for Laban for seven years. But it seemed like a very short time because he loved Rachel very much. After seven years, Jacob said to Laban, Give me Rachel so that I can marry her. My time of work for you is finished. So Laban gave a party for all the people in that place. That night Laban brought his daughter Leah to Jacob. Jacob and Leah had sexual relations together. In the morning Jacob saw that it was Leah he had slept with. And he said to Laban, You have tricked me. I worked hard for you so that I could marry Rachel. Why did you trick me? Laban said, In our country we don't allow the younger daughter to marry before the older daughter. Continue for the full week of the marriage ceremony, and I will also give you Rachel to marry. But you must serve me another seven years. So Jacob did this and finished the week. Then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel as a wife. And Jacob loved Rachel more than Leah. Jacob worked for Laban for another seven years.